Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest installment of Beyond the Mask, where today, we're diving into the troubled past of one of Scream's most notorious serial killers, Stu Marker. For the most part, Stu is somewhat overlooked within the universe itself, with Billy Loomis often being credited for starting the Ghostface attacks in Woodsboro in 1996, and being responsible for the murder of Maureen Prescott. Stu is considered merely an accomplice of Billy's, someone that Billy himself was told to involve in the plan in case he needed someone to frame for the murders. However, Stu's involvement in the crimes committed from 1995 onwards held no real significance to him. From Billy's perspective, he was motivated by vengeance against Maureen Prescott and Sidney, and blamed them specifically for his mother abandoning him and leaving him in the care of his father. Hank Loomis. Stu on the other hand had no real motive for his involvement in the murders. He claimed it was due to peer pressure, but it's safe to say for the most part, Stu obviously enjoyed his role in the massacre in 1996, despite not really knowing why he and Billy decided to do it initially. This makes Stu far darker than anyone likes to give him credit for, but if he wasn't motivated by revenge, what did motivate him? How did this seemingly normal teenager, who was considered a popular figure at Woodsboro High, turn out to be so sadistic and cruel? Sit back and relax as we take a deep dive into the tragic past of Stu Marker. Based on the 1996 movie alone, it's easy to assume why a lot of information about Stu is unknown. Aside from his home being used in the climax of the movie, we get very little insight into his home life. For the most part, all we know is that he's Billy's friend, Tatum's boyfriend, and is defeated by Sidney in the climax of the movie. However, scattered through dialogue, hidden easter eggs, and scriptural hints, we do discover that Stu's life was somewhat tragic. Born in 1978, Stu Marker was the first born son of Mr. and Mrs. Marker. The pair would later go on to have a daughter named Leslie. To the eyes of the Woodsboro residents, the Marker family were one of great fortune. Their home was well maintained and appreciated by passers-by. Little did anyone know that this perfectly presented farmhouse masked over a deeply troubled family. It's established through hidden easter eggs that Mr. and Mrs. Marker were very much career oriented parents placing their work and personal needs ahead of the needs of their own kids. It's alluded to that Mr. and Mrs. Marker personally neglected Stu. In a hidden note inside their home, it stated the pair had gone away and left Stu home alone, without even saying goodbye. This appears to be a regular occurrence. Majority of the major characters in Scream all have parental figures present, except two, Randy and Stu. Randy's home is never specifically shown on screen, which is likely why we never get any insight into who his parents are. We do spend a great deal of time at Stu Marker's house, however, with no evidence or indication of his parental figure's presence. In fact, when Stu announces a party is happening at his house, no one appears to question where his parents are. They just run with this invitation, like it's a normal occurrence. What's more, Given the current curfew that was in place and the danger behind the teens being left home alone, it's troubling that Mr. and Mrs. Marker would leave their son and daughter alone. Mr. and Mrs. Marker's neglectful behaviour likely was the cause of Stu's behavioural spiral. It's never stated on screen, but Stu displays over hyperactive characteristics that he masks over with an eccentric demeanour. This is likely something that his parents would have to observe thoroughly. The lack of presence in his life allowed this to get out of hand. It's unknown when this occurred, but Stu began referring to himself personally as psychotic, as he was groomed by Billy Loomis to join him in his murderous plan against Maureen Prescott. Billy's motive was elevated through his own emotional trauma. However, he didn't share this with Stu, meaning that Billy was able to plan his murderous revenge without needing to explain anything to Stu. The simple fact that Stu went along with this willingly, without understanding the facts, showed two things. One was that he wasn't doing this for his friend, 
If he understood Billy's motive and was out for revenge because of it, it could be excused as friendly support. The fact is he believed this was murderous fun and went along anyway. And secondly, Stu likely already had the dark tendency to murder, but that is somewhat unexplored. Stu's dark mind is often overlooked in the general picture of the story. However, if you look at the bigger picture, he was somewhat more psychotic than Billy. The murder of Casey Becker was planned because of the simple fact she sat next to Sydney in school. However, the simplicity of that explanation contains hidden subtext. Casey was the former girlfriend of Stu, likely bonded through their love for horror movies. The pair seemingly had a lot in common. However, Casey dumped Stu in favour of Stephen Arth, the same Stephen Arth whom was also sadistically murdered on the same night as Casey. All of this, despite having a minor connection to Sydney, felt somewhat more personal to Stu. The personalisation was apparent more so in the fact that Stu used the fact that his parents cared little about what he did to his advantage. He planned and orchestrated how he and Billy would murder their victims by using dolls as examples of how it could be carried out. Twisted and dark, the dolls would go on to become keepsakes for Stu, so he could reflect on times he and Billy had during their killing spree. And despite his love for killing and the enjoyment he had orchestrating, researching and more with Billy, Stu seemingly didn't trust Billy, apprehensive and somewhat cautious. When the time came towards the end for the pair to assume the roles as victims from the spree, Stu had doubts about Billy stabbing him directly. It's a side of their relationship people often get wrong. Stu and Billy may have been in this together, but Stu was very consciously aware of Billy and didn't trust his friend to see their plan through. The relationship was an interesting one. It's alluded to that Billy saw the neglectful tendencies of Stu's parents and presented himself as Stu's only companion, a companion that would look out for him. It's my personal belief that this was what their relationship was based on. Stu, despite his ways, wanted to be appreciated and cared for something his parents weren't reciprocating towards him. And so, Billy was able to exploit this to his advantage. This is what makes Stu's story somewhat tragic. If he'd have received the love he so craved from his parents, and had they been there for their son, the feeling of neglect would likely never have sunk in, or manifested into something darker. The story of Stu Marker is overlooked in the universe, Despite his credibility as a killer, credit for the events of 1995 onwards are often given solely to Billy Loomis, and Stu is somewhat forgotten. Similar to his parents' own decision to neglect Stu, his legacy ended up being neglected too, making all of what he did pointless and of little purpose. And that's it for this video. If you enjoyed this content, don't forget to like, share, and be sure to subscribe. I will see you guys in the next video.